Welcome back to another video. Now in this video we will look at how to create a rectangular case which we can 3D print. We will look at the techniques so you can use it for different kinds of use cases. You can use the case for example to uh, store your Raspberry Pi or any other electronic board. So let's start with it. First let's have a look at a real life example. Now this is a prototype I've been working on for my synthesizer and it contains a Raspberry Pi and those knobs and also a display. On the sides we have the holes for the ports and here we have some holes to reduce the print time and the material which will be used for printing. Now what we can also see are those mounts for the board and those screw holes which will hold the board tight in its position. What's important here is the thickness of the wall. I have here a cheap caliper and which is awesome to measure the wall thickness. And what we can see here, we have a wall thickness of about 2 millimeters, which is the minimum to create a really sturdy case. I nearly can't bend it. This is really, really stable. I have here a different example. This is the prototype of the case for my digital photo frame. And the wall thickness is only about one millimeter. And it's really not that stable. It really wobbles around. And it will most likely break if you put too much pressure on it. In this video I'm using Blender 2.92. Just like in my previous videos, you can see in the bottom right corner my mouse and keyboard input. We start with an empty scene where we have the cube and the camera and the light. And the first thing we are going to do is to delete the camera and the lights. And that's it. Now the next step, we are going to change the scale here in Blender. For that, we click on this little cone here and we click on units. And currently we can see we have meters as a length. If we click on our cube and we click on item, then we can see the dimensions are two by two by two meters. And we want to change that to millimeters because Cura and the other slicers, which we are using to print our stuff, are using millimeters. So we are going to change it here to millimeters. And now you can see we have here 2000 millimeters by 2000 millimeters by 2000 millimeters, which is a bit too large. And we can adjust it here in unit scale. And I will set it to 0.0.1. But now I'm missing the grid. And I need to adjust it as well. And for that I, get, I go here on the top right corner to overlays. And here I have scale and I set this also to 0.0.1. We are doing that to get the same dimensions in Blender as in Cura. So we don't need to change anything. I will do a quick test. I will just export this cube as SDL file. We'll just name it test or cube is better. And here I will need to set the scale to 10. Then I just export it and I make sure selection only is selected and I export it. Then I go to Cura. I'm currently using Cura 4.9 4.9 0. Yeah. And here I just import the cube. 
cube, 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 uh, here it is. And as we can see, it has the same scale like in Blender. We have 20 millimeters by 20 millimeters by 20 millimeters. And in Cura, it's the same. 20 by 20 by 20. Perfect. So now we can start to modify it. But we won't start with a cube. We will start with a simpler object. So we are going to delete it. And we press Shift A and Plane. Then we go into Edit Mode. We make sure here on the top left corner we are in Face Select. We click on the face of our plane, press Delete and select only faces. This will only delete the face, but the edges are still there. It's a bit difficult to see. In the next step, we are going to add some cuts to add additional edges. And for that, we choose our loop cut tool by pressing Ctrl and R. We need to be in the edit mode. And we can see here this yellow dot and if I scroll up, I can increase the amounts of cuts and I will set it to two and I will need two cuts right now. I apply it by pressing left click and now I have here, first I need to make sure I have edge select activated and now I have here three edges and on the bottom I only have one edge, one single edge. Now I select the edge in the middle, I press E and X, no, Y to extrude this edge along the Y axis. I hold down control for a fixed step size and now we can see it also has created a face and I go again back to face select. I select the face, press delete and only faces. Now I go into edge select and I select the top edge here and press delete and select edges. This is basically our base shape, or basically these are the walls of our case. And now we will extrude it on the Z axis and we will add a ground. And we can also use this to create a top plate, maybe for a display or something like that. And here, yeah. let me just demonstrate it quickly. Um, I go into edit mode. I select all edges by pressing A. I press E to extrude and Z to extrude along the Z axis. I hold down control for a fixed step size. And there we get our basic walls. Now I go back to object mode. I add a modifier. I press on this blue little wrench, add solidify modifier. And then I click on even thickness. Can increase the thickness like that. And then I go back into edit mode. I select all the edges on the bottom simply by holding down Alt and Shift and left click. And then I just press F to create a face and we have a ground. And the solidify modifier will also add thickness to our ground. So basically this is already a case and you could just create a top plate for it and that's it. This is basically the workflow. Now you could add some holes for your ports and some mounts for your electronic devices and yeah, maybe some screw holes. Now I want to show you an additional workflow, how you can 
add curves to your case. So I will undo all my changes. I only select this edge here on the right. Then I click on spin tool and I click on the blue plus symbol. I hold down control and I rotate it by about 90 degrees. Here on the bottom left, I have a small menu where I can adjust my settings for the spin tool. And I can also change the center just by clicking on those arrows like this. I switched back to object mode and I go back into edit mode. I activate face select. I change my selection to select circle just by pressing W and I select all those faces here. Then I press delete and select only faces. Then I activate edge select, select all the edges here, but not the last one. And I delete only the edges. And here we have now a curved base shape and we can extrude it. I select all the edges, press E to extrude and Z to extrude along the Z axis. And I go back into object mode. I add a solidify modifier, even thickness and I change the thickness to 0 0.5. Now you can see here some weird behavior. This is because of the normals. And we can fix that. For that we go into edit mode. We make sure we are in face select. We select all faces and press Alt and N. And we select recalculate outside. In edit mode, we deselect everything again. We make sure we are in edge select and we only select all the edges on the bottom by holding down Alt and Shift and left click. Then we press F and there we have our ground. And if we go back to object mode, our solidify modifier will also add thickness to the ground. And this is basically how you can create curved cases. Okay, these were some quick demonstrations how you can create a rectangular case. Now we want to go into more detail and we will start again. And add also the holes for the port and also the mounts for an electronic board. For this video, I will use a Raspberry Pi as my electronic board and I will create the mounts for it and also the ports, the cutouts for the ports. So first I create a plane, go into edit mode, delete only the faces and add some cuts to the top edge by using the loop cut tool. Then I extrude this edge to the bottom. I need to make sure that I'm in edge select. I select this face, press delete, select only faces. I go back in edge select. I select the top edge and delete it, but only the edges. So I have this base shape again. Now in the next step, we need some measurements. 
I mean, you could use a caliper and measure all the dimensions of your board, but in my opinion, it's easier to do it in a different way. There are already 3D models of, for example, the Raspberry Pi or maybe an Arduino or any other stuff. And we can use this to build our case around it. For that, I will now download a 3D model of a Raspberry Pi. I've just found one on Thinkiverse. And it's also an STL file. I will download the light version of it. And I can import this STL file in Blender. Okay, I will just scale it down on each axis to 0 0.1. Yeah, this is a perfect size. And I will apply the scale again by pressing Ctrl and A and select scale. And yeah, now I will scale up my base shape. I will rotate the raspberry by 180 degree. On the z-axis, yeah, like this. I will now set the origin of this 3D model to the origin, to the center of the geometry. Currently it's here on the top right corner. For that, I just click on object, set origin and set geometry to origin. Okay, this is way better. Okay, let's make the 3D model of the Raspberry invisible again. And I will now continue with the walls of this case. Now first I want to round up the corners here, 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 and here. For that I need to make sure that the scale is set to 1 on each axis. and so I press Ctrl and A and apply scale. Then I go into edit mode. I make sure that I'm in vertex select and I select these vertices here. And I press Ctrl Shift B. And I scroll up to increase the roundness. And then I press left click to apply it. Now I select all edges. I need to make sure that I'm in edge select. Then I press E to extrude, Z to extrude along the Z axis. Like this. And I go back into object mode, add a solidify modifier. Set the thickness to, I set it to two millimeter because this is the thickness where the case is really, really stable. And I will set the offset to, now first I make sure that I have activated even thickness. I go into edit mode, activate face select, select all faces, press Alt and N recalculate outside and then I set the offset to 1 so it will create the thickness on the outside of the wall not on the inside and then I go to edit mode deselect everything go to edge select and only select all the edges on the bottom by holding down shift and alt and left click. Then I press F to create a face. And this is the basic case, which we are going to modify now with the help of our 3D model of the Raspberry. So I will make the model visible again. 
I go into wireframe mode by pressing Z and select wireframe. And now I can adjust the height of the model. Like this. It's very easy to create the holes for the ports now because this model is already very accurate and we don't need to make any measurements. So for each port we will create a cube, for example, for this USB port here. And we just will use the Boolean modifier. We will apply it to our case object and set it to difference. And then uh, and this way we can create the holes. Very easy. You may ask yourself why I have created this indentation here. For example, if you're using a display, which is for example, the same size than the board, and the board is like is set like this. I mean, it looks way better when the display is in the middle of the case. But because of the ports, because of the location of the ports, it's sometimes not possible. So it's way easier just to create some indentation here. So you can still access all your ports and set the whole board to the middle so that the location of your display is also in the middle and everything looks fancy and it's still very usable. Now I go to wireframe mode. I will need to select all of this here. Then I press G and X and now I can adjust it. And here on the right, like this. I mean, in this scenario, this indentation here doesn't make sense, but it's just for demonstration. So you know how you can solve the issue if you have, for example, a display, which is connected to your board, but it's not in the middle and it doesn't look good. You can just create an indentation like this and still access all your ports. The next step is to create the holes for the ports. I go back to solid mode and make my case objects invisible. And then I will just create some cubes like this. I recommend that you also rename your objects so you know which object is what. Because if you have a bunch of objects and every object has the name cube or cube one, cube two, cube three, then it's really difficult to locate the actual object and you need to go through all objects, make them visible again and invisible and so on. So much faster if you have just renamed it and then you can locate them instantly. I will select those cubes here and press Ctrl J. This will merge those objects to a single one and I will rename it to ports side. Then I make my case object visible again. I add a Boolean modifier I select the port side object, set it to difference, and that's about it. Now I need to make sure the scale is correct of my case. Okay, I can increase the height of my case. Select the top edges again by hold down Alt and Shift and do left click and then I move them up like this. Okay, now I go back into object mode and this is what it looks like right now. Nice. Now we will do the same for these ports here, but first I will adjust the size a bit of our case. we we'll just select this face here and move it down. Perfect. Then I make my case object invisible and I create objects 
which are similar to the ports. So for that, I will just create a circle or a cylinder. I might make the cylinder as round as possible. You should make the holes for the ports way larger than the actual port because it can happen if you make it too small then your cable will not fit. Okay, the next is the HDMI port. For that I will just create a cube object. Okay, now I will merge those objects by selecting them and hold down control. And then I press control J. I rename this object to ports top. I make my case object visible again, click on it, add an additional modifier Boolean modifier to it, set it to difference and select ports top. Perfect. Now in the next step, we are going to create the mounts for the port. I will make my case object invisible. And now I will just create a cube and we'll make it the dimensions similar to the dimensions of my board. like this. Now I will create a boolean modifier. I create a second cube and now I want to cut out all the parts of this first cube which I don't need. I will only need those edges here also with the holes and here also this part with the hole. So basically I can create, I can cut out all of this here and all of this here. Just used the loop cut to add two cuts to the object. and I use scale to move them individually. Like this. And now I can, I select face select. I make my raspberry object invisible. I select these two faces here. Press E to extrude, right click and S to scale and X to scale along the X axis. Okay, now I make my Raspberry object visible again. And I will add two additional cuts here. And I will move them again individually by using the scale tool. Then I select these two faces here, press E to extrude, right click, 
S to move them individually and to Y to move them along the Y axis. I will rename it to cutout. Cube, I will rename it to mounts. Mounts. And then I will select the cutout object on my mounts object in the Boolean modifier. Set it to difference. That's what I get. Perfect. And now I make my Raspberry objects visible again. And then I will create an additional cube. And scale it up so it has the same size than the Raspberry. Like this. Then I select the edges, make my Raspberry object visible again, and I press Ctrl B. First, I go back to object mode and press Ctrl and A to apply my scale. Then I go back into edit mode and press Ctrl B. Scale it down on the z-axis. Move it up a bit. Rename it to base cutout and I select mounts. Add a boolean modifier, select base cutout. Perfect. And then the last thing I need to do is to create the holes. And for that I will just create four cylinder objects. Here you need to check how thick your screws are because if it's too big then your screws are loosey and if it's too thin, if those th circles are too small, then your screws also will not fit. So here you, you will need to try it out. Shift D to create a copy of the circle. Shift D again. And then I merge those objects by pressing Ctrl and J. Rename them to screw holes. And then I select mounts. Add a Boolean modifier to it, select screw holes. And that's it. Uh, yeah. Now I make my base object visible again. Here I add a boolean modifier, select my mounts object and set it to union. And there we have our mounts. Okay, let's just quickly create a top plate. For that I will create a copy of my case object, rename it to top, delete all the modifiers, I make my case object invisible, apply the solidify modifier, I delete everything else, I'm in face select, I selected all faces, on the top and also this one here and then I press delete and faces now I only have the 
bottom face and I extrude it by pressing E and Z. And now I basically have a plate which I can use as my top plate. And I move it up like this. Perfect. Now how to mount this? How to connect this with the bottom case? What you can do is to create an inner border. Go into edit mode, select this face here. And I select inset faces here. Like this. And I can also set the thickness. I will set it to 2.1 because the wall thickness of our case is two millimeter. Then I will add an additional insert face. Then I will apply it again. And I will make the thickness maybe 0 0.5 millimeter. Then we have here a border. Okay, we will select this border manually just by selecting all the faces of it. Now I will just extrude it on the Z axis like this. Okay. So if you put this top plate on your bottom case, on the bottom part of your case, it will already uh, snap in. And now we need to fix it somehow. And we can do it by using screws. For example, you could just add some screw holes here on the edges of the bottom part of the case and also some screw holes on the top plate. And I will just demonstrate it. I will just create a circle again, or maybe a cube because a cube is easier to handle. And then I will resize it, rotate it by 45 degree, like this. And I need to move it up. And I scale it up a bit like this. Now we need to make sure that here this bottom face is has an angle of 45 degree because otherwise it can't be printed without support structure. So that I will just move it up. I will like this. And then I will Create a copy of that, move it, rotate it, create another copy of that, and maybe a final one here. And I will merge them by pressing Ctrl and J, and I rename them. And then I can, I select my case object and add an additional Boolean modifier. First, I need to create screw holes. So I create a cylinder, make it as round as possible. copies of it and I will merge them and rename them holes. Then I select my screw holes top object, add a boolean modifier, select my holes and here yeah, I make my case object visible again and select my screw holes top objects and set it to union. 
Okay, now we need to adjust the border of our top plate because here we have those screw holes. We will just adjust the height of those screw holes. We also need to activate holes. And then we just move it down a bit like this. I mean, then we have a little gap here, but uh, this is just to demonstrate the techniques. We select now our top and add a Boolean modifier and set it to difference and we can set the holes, which we need to make bigger. I scale it on the Z axis, I scale them up like this. And there we have our holes also on the top plate. Perfect. Now let's have a quick look how this looks like in Cura. I save it all and I select it, export to STL, case, make sure selection only is activated and apply modifiers and the scale is set to 10. Then I export the STL file, import it, I go to file, open file, and I select my case STL. Currently it will need 3 hours and 46 minutes to print at least the bottom part of our case. And as you can see, because this has an angle smaller than 45 degree, we don't need support structure to print it. Okay, I think here is some error. So the next thing is we want to reduce the print time by adding some holes here on the bottom case. The best thing how you can create such holes, which also reduce the print time, not every hole will reduce the print time. For example, if you use hexagons, which look really fancy, then your print time won't go down because hexagons are complicated to print. It's much faster if you just create multiple rectangles, which is a really simple shape and the print head can move very fast to create them. So I create a cube, go to wireframe mode and then I just add an array modifier. and I increase the distance between those copies. This array modifier creates copies of this object and I set the count to 10, no, maybe to 15. Yeah, that's it. And then I click on my case object, select Boolean modifier, set it to difference and select, I will rename it to rectangular cutouts and I select it in the boolean modifier and this is what we get. Go to into wireframe mode, now into solid mode and then we can we save first and export it to STL file and in Cura we just do right click and reload all models. And as you can see, we really, really reduced the print time from three hours, I think it was 46 minutes, to two hours and 54 minutes. Honestly, I don't know what this bluish color means in Cura. Now the top, I will create a copy of the top, rename it to copy or maybe to final, and then I apply all the modifiers. Then I can move it up. Rotate it by 180 degree like this and lay it flat on the ground. Mm. 
like this. And now I select both my objects, go to export STL, export STL, then I go back to Cura and press right click, reload all models. And that's it. I hope you could learn something from this video and as always, I will see you in the next video.